Thank you for joining another episode of the National Safety Council's Safety is Personal video series. Safety impacts all of us every day, at work, on our roads, in our homes, communities, and in our armed services. Safety matters wherever we are and always. At the National Safety Council, we know that safety is personal. And this video series enables us to share what motivates leaders and advocates, what makes them passionate about safety. Everyone has a safety story. And today we're excited to speak with Chief Master Sergeant Amber Person. She serves as the career field manager for Air Force safety in the United States Air Force. Chief Master Sergeant Person entered the Air Force in 1998 and has held several safety leadership roles in her 25 year career. She has completed tours around the US and overseas in South Korea, Guam, and Germany. Amber, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you've had quite an impactful career in the United States Air Force. Um, can you share a little bit of what that has meant to you and how safety really became part of that Air Force journey? I joined the military primarily as a means to escape the life that I was raised in. I was exposed to a lot of terrible things, uh, drugs and alcohol abuse, theft, violence, prostitution. My parents were incarcerated for a lot of my childhood, so I spent time living with different family members, and I was in the foster system for a while as well. When I turned 18, I knew one thing with certainty, that I wanted to escape and get as far away from that life as I possibly could. Unfortunately, my grades suffered. Uh, I struggled in school, being the odd kid with thrift store clothes and um, lice and being sick all the time. So school was tough and my grades suffered. So scholarships were not an option and we were poor. We were on welfare. So college tuition was also not an option. Somebody recommended the military. And so I started to look into the Air Force and it was the most promising opportunity that I had available. I joined and I can say with um, full honesty that that was the best decision that I've ever made in my life. I never in a million years would think that I'd do as well as I have, um, that I'd be any good at it, or that I'd still be serving 25 years. I'm quite proud of what I've accomplished both personally and professionally. Now, when I entered, I actually came in as human resources management. Um, about 12 years into my career, I was afforded the opportunity to retrain into safety, and uh, it came at a really good time. I was feeling stagnant, I was unhappy with the work that I was doing, and I saw this as a chance to change my life yet again. So I joined safety and was thrown in. It was incredibly challenging. Not only did I have to learn a completely new job, but I also had to learn new skills that I had not developed yet. Communication, um, interpersonal skills, those building relationship type things, and it was interesting and it was challenging. Before in my previous job, I was evaluated primarily on my ability to just accomplish tasks. With safety, I not only had to accomplish tasks, but I was also evaluated on my ability to connect with individuals. It was outside my comfort zone. It was, again, a struggle for me, and it was a sink or swim situation. So. Fortunately, um, I had support and I did what I needed to do to learn and I learned to swim. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that journey. And, and that is an amazing journey. And, and it's great that you included uh, sharing with us that someone made that recommendation to go into the Air Force. It, it's amazing that a single person, whether it's a safety issue or in your case, you know, giving you a chance to do something outside of the environment that you were in and, and have amazing success as a, result, as a result, that a single person can change your life. And um, your safety journey, and now, as you just said, not only the administrative piece of being a safety uh, professional, but the fact that you're interacting with other human beings and having such a, a profound impact on their life um, is just amazing. So thank you for sharing that story. Um, and we're so glad that you're doing what you're doing because you're saving lives. Um, but I bet there are times in, in the new job that are in this new career for you uh, that you've had to have, um, you know, uh, folks come to you and either say that something bad happened or you're actually uh, looking at conditions being unsafe and, and continuing that journey of keeping people safe. Can you share a little bit about you know, how, how that has touched you and, and how that has been part of 
um, your Air Force career. Yes, when I joined safety, I was told that I would experience a fatality. I'll never forget the day that I received that first phone call. The mishap involved a motorcycle rider who was doing everything right, but just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. The images from that mishap scene and the conversations with the individuals involved with the mishap, those are things that I'll, I'll never get out of my head. What I wasn't warned about is what a friend of mine calls the blast radius, the distance from the source affected when an explosion occurs. When we have a fatality or even a serious injury, it's not just the individual that we've lost. It is everybody close to them, those around them, those responsible for their safety, whether that's a parent or friend, spouse, partner. It's also the people who are responsible for their safety while they're at work, their supervisors, or even whatever the mishap activity was, if it was a trainer or somebody that was supposed to provide oversight. It's also the individuals who are in some way responsible for the mishap occurring. The person that maybe turned a blind eye to something that should not have been being done. Somebody that allowed a shortcut. Somebody that maybe allowed an unauthorized deviation to occur. That ripple effect is tremendous and can be crippling to families, to communities, to entire organizations. That blast radius from the first fatality that I encountered is what has stuck with me and it's what I remember and let drive me every day when I come to work. It's what I let drive me to do the best I can in this safety profession. Thank you for that analogy. I can, I can just picture that, the ripple effects of everybody around um, the person who's been injured or um, has lost their life. And those are, can be lifelong um, ripple effects and injuries. Um, and I'm sure as a safety professional, those, those blast radius hit you often. Um, are there some specific challenges in the Air Force that you could share with us that you think uh, safety brings to light? So the challenges that I've uh, identified since being in safety are the same two that I struggled the most with when I entered the career field communication and interpersonal skills and relationships. Safety cultures are often driven by policy and programs. Those things are massively important. They are, they are the core of what we do. But unfortunately, if an individual is driving those policies and procedures, if they lack the ability to affect, uh, effectively communicate or connect with people, those policies are going to fall short. It's too often that I'm in the field and I meet safety professionals who are super excited to share with me that they just completed uh, an inspection of an organization. And look at this, I found 100 write-ups, 100 hazards and, and deficiencies. That's great. Let's mitigate those hazards. Let's prevent future mishaps from happening. That is why we're there. But I always ask them, while you were in the organization, did you make an effort to build relationships? Did you make eye contact with the individuals when you were speaking with them? Did you build rapport or find a connection with the people that you were writing up? Too often the answers are no. I don't believe that safety programs can be effective without those pieces. If we are not making the effort to make connections and, and build relationships in the organizations that we're embedded in for their safety programs, if we aren't making sure that they truly believe that we care about their health and safety, those hundred hazards that you just identified, they're most likely going to be dismissed. I recognize that that's a challenge, and as the career field manager, what I'm trying to do to get after that is enhance training for our new safety professionals, and specifically training on commu communication and interpersonal skills. So we've actually just recently developed courses that are geared toward those things um, for our new professionals. My hope is that given that foundation, if I can at least provide that, that these safety professionals will see the positive impact that enhancing and honing those skills has on their relationships and that they'll continue to grow in those areas on their own. Wow, that's really powerful. Um, if, if we say safety is personal, it is about other human beings and, 
and getting them to change their behavior and, and to make sure that they are um, not only looking out for themselves, but others. And the way that you characterize that by it, be, it being about relationships is just really powerful. And, and you've seen some changes, I assume, when folks have looked at this as another human being on the other side, not just a, a policy check the box or, you know, the safety police coming by. Have you, have you seen some good progress there? Absolutely. It, it, and, and I'm excited by the progress that I've seen. Um, you know, some of these, these the culture that we've had even within, within the profession um, has been this way for a long time. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of work to help shift these mindsets and perspectives. But I'm telling you, when, when they see themselves, the impact that those changes have, um, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. So I am, I'm very, very excited. Well, we could all learn a thing or two about that program, and maybe um, I'll be calling you and see if we can uh, share it with others, because that's really, really powerful. I, I do think a lot of safety programs get very clinical, um, and when you do that, um, you are missing the chance to truly get to someone's heart and head um, about making sure that they keep themselves and others safe. So, Absolutely. thank you. Well, um, I also was in the Air Force some time ago, as, as some folks know. Um, and when I was in the Air Force, there really weren't too many women in at the time. I won't give my age. I always say that that's classified still. Um, but I'm sure there are still challenges of making sure that we keep everyone equally safe, whether um, it's a gender related or physical size. Um, I know when I was in the Air Force, I got issued, you know, PPE that did not fit. I'm, I'm only five foot tall with really, really small feet. Um, and at the time, they just didn't have it available. Um, are there things that you still could see today that are either important for us to keep in our lens to ensure that everyone um, is, is kept safe and that we have that diversity and inclusion lens? Um, and what kinds of things have you kind of leaned into there that you could share with us? Absolutely, diversity and inclusion is is massively important in, in every aspect of what we do. Um, about two years ago, the Department of the Air Force directed a barrier analysis uh, to be done with every career field using working groups. And their goal was to identify and uncover any uh, perceived or potential biases within the career fields. What my group found was that we did indeed have some barriers and biases within our safety career field. As you've mentioned, um, a severe imbalance with the gender and also some ethnic groups within the career field. So what I've done was overhauled the um, application process. Before, when people wanted to enter the career field, I would get just um, random applications submitted throughout, and I would look at the first 20 that I would get and evaluate them and approve the ones that were highly qualified. Now, to be more deliberate in this process, I wait until I receive all applications. It's a cyclical process for the Air Force, and I evaluate all applications. I'm looking for the most qualified, the strongest people that I think would bring value to safety. I believe it's massively important to have a diverse career field um, for two reasons, really. First and foremost, when we look different, we think different. Those differing opinions, perspectives, and experiences are what contribute to effective and strong safety cultures. And the second part of that is when members in the field, the organizations that we are inspecting and investigating, when they see representation with our safety professionals, when they can see a similarity and find a connection with the people that we have out dealing with them, that has been proven to be very, very um, impactful in a positive way. And that's important to me. Another thing that the barrier analysis uncovered was a requirement to enter the career field for people to have the ability to speak clearly and distinctly. It popped up three times in the application process, meaning anybody interested in the career field was exposed to the potential of being disqualified based on biases three separate times. So I asked why, what is the why behind this requirement? And nobody could give me a valid reason. So I had to ask, can an individual be successful? Can an individual be an effective safety professional if they have a strong accent or a dialect or a speech impediment? Absolutely. So we eliminated the requirement completely, done. 
I'm really happy even with those two things um, as far as getting after barriers and, 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 and improving our career field as far as diversity and inclusion is in, um, involved. But I realize that this is a, a journey and not a destination. So fortunately, the working groups that are an enduring process and I will continue to seek as much feedback as I can from the field to help identify and address any other bi uh, barriers, excuse me, or biases that, that exist. Really powerful. The The safety profession on, on whole isn't as diverse as we need it to be. So um, it's something that I know that a lot of organizations and even uh, government organizations have really been thinking about how do we get more a diverse representation into safety professionals in the first place for all the reasons you said to make sure we got the strongest, most creative voices and thoughts and that we represent the people that we're serving because those perspectives need to be at the table as well. So that's just really powerful. And um, another journey that I would love to keep tabs on and see how that goes and, and get some lessons learned from you. So thank you for that. Hopefully you, you, you have uh, combat boots that fit you these days and those kinds of things. I know we've made a lot of progress um, and making sure that females have the right PPE um, to keep them safe. I got another one for you. You even brought it up. You talked about safety culture and how that's so important to be kind of the backdrop of an entire safety program and an organization. And it's really important when, when you want a strong safety culture that you have a workplace where people feel comfortable bringing their voice, of speaking up, of raising issues um, about what might or might not be serving them and keeping them safe. And a lot of organizations are always working, you know, as you said, it's a consistent journey to make sure that we're creating that kind of a workplace. Well, how do you though, in, in your uh, the culture of the military and specifically the Air Force, focus on building that strong culture of safety and making sure that everybody feels comfortable to bring their voice? I believe that safety cultures are absolutely dependent on the relationships between the leaders, the members of the organization, and safety professionals. The organizations that have the strongest safety cultures are the ones that not only foster those relationships, but that also actively seek feedback from their individuals at, at all levels. The most powerful thing that we can do is give people a voice and ensure that they feel heard and that they feel valued. We at the Safety Center and within the career field, we're, we're doing our best to make sure that both of those things happen. We have uh, innovated platforms for people to give feedback, um, either anonymously or not, because we found that that is also key in somebody's ability to speak up. Um, we also build tiger teams to get after projects, and we make these as diverse as we can using people from the field, um, safety professionals, and people within the different divisions as far as um, whatever, whatever we're seeking to improve, those SMEs, subject matter experts. And we do this for projects to either innovate or create new programs or processes, but also to enhance or improve or to change the legacy ones. Although we're in leadership positions and we may have 25 years of experience under our belt, uh, we are smart enough to realize that the most technical experts and the most creative minds are the individuals in the field doing the work day to day. And why would we not capitalize on that? And then for individuals who are afraid to speak up, my recommendation to them is consider the blast radius. Consider that blast radius and the potential of what could happen if you don't speak up. Very powerful. Thank you for that. Um, and yeah, that I can feel that right now all the way across the Zoom link. So thank you, ma'am. Um, I do want to share another thing or ask you another question, and that is, what do you think is on the horizon? Um, most organizations, you know, they're dealing with their data. They know what's causing them to have mishaps or fatalities right now, but they're also looking over the hill, right? And what's coming down. For the Air Force, if you picked a couple things that are really important to be focused on for safety, what would they be? Absolutely. So again, as the career field manager, my, my biggest challenge is deliberately developing our safety professionals. Um, the, the different initiatives that I've already shared with you that we're working on, I'm very, very proud of. Um, but I'd also like to share the newest, which is incorporating resilience training for our safety professionals into our, um, our basic, intermediate, and advanced courses. 
It is our responsibility to equip our people with the tools necessary to deal with not only the day-to-day -day stressors of life, because let's be honest, we, we've all got things that we're dealing with, but also to appropriately prepare them for the immense grief that comes with serious injuries and fatalities. And I realized that my focus in these areas of communication and interpersonal relationships and, and resilience, that they're a bit unorthodox, but um, I will continue getting challenged about that. And I have people that ask, why isn't your focus more on preparing people for investigations and inspections? Why aren't you putting more emphasis on, on safety certifications? My job as the career field manager is to build better airmen. If I do that, I am simultaneously creating and building better safety professionals. And it is those individuals who will in turn build our safety communities and ensure that they are strong and healthy for our airmen and guardians. Wow, you just you just told the safety is personal story right there, ma'am. <laughs> um, it's all about people and you can just feel that coming from everything that you've shared with us today. Um, I wanna just say a huge thank you for sharing uh, not only your personal story, but also the story in the Air Force um, of what you've done for that career field and for the men and women who um, keep other people safe and make sure that they go home to their families um, each evening. Um, and for also really bringing to us um, some really important, I think, messages about the blast radius and about how much a single decision can be either a very positive influence in someone's life or perhaps not only a negative for them, but for so many others. Um, you really brought that to life for us here today. I wanna to say a huge thank you for sharing that. Uh, Chief Person, you are a, a safety leader, but you're also a life leader. Um, and I just wanna thank you for everything that you're doing in the career field for the Air Force and for the lives that you touch. Safety is personal and I, I have not heard another story that has brought it home so, so clearly for me, so thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I, I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you all for joining us. This is uh, one more in our series with Safety is Personal, and we'll look forward to joining you in the next round.